Welcome again. I'm Stephen Libman, and this is another session of Let's Talk Money, right? And you'll notice that in my moniker on my website, it says Let's Talk Dirty Money, and the dirty is sort of scratched out because people don't talk about money. They don't, they see it as one of these taboo topics that they can't talk about. If somebody says, how much do you make? Nobody wants to tell the truth. Um, how are you doing financially? Nobody wants to give the right answer. So money has become something that because people don't generally talk about as they should talk about with everyday things, uh, you know, they just don't get the opportunities to learn things that they ought to make, they ought to be made aware of. So I'm going to go back to the basics because I had a number of questions that came up about planning. And what's interesting about that is nothing happens without starting out with a proper plan. So I want to give you sort of a question to think about. What would you do if you won a million bucks? What would you do if you won a million bucks? Well, I'm going to tell you what most people would do if they want a million bucks. They would likely be broke within three years. And that is simply because they do not have the mind for money. They don't understand it. They don't know how it works. They have a consumer mindset. They're going to go buy, buy, buy stuff that is a depreciating value. It's, it's going to look good and feel good, whatever, for the moment. But it's not going to go build them wealth. If you're a multimillionaire or you know how to make money, you would probably make more money with that million dollars. But the average person would more than likely simply be broke. 70% of lottery winners or those who receive a huge windfall go broke. So is it really something that is a curse? Well, maybe a curse of lack of knowledge or education. See, winning big won't solve your financial problems. That's a myth. And winning the lottery will not even make you happier unless you actually know how to treat that money. So you need a plan for money before you make it. So let's say statistically, you're not going to win the lottery because that's kind of true, but you are going to make money every week or every month or every year, but you need a plan for money before you actually make it. Now we touched on this a few sessions back. I want to go in a little bit deeper with you, but I want to simplify that you start with a simple budget. How much money is coming in? That's it. How many, let's not worry about fancy names, income and expenses. Who cares? Start with a simple budget. How much money is coming into your life? Subtract how much money is going out, right? So you got money coming in, money going out. What's left? It's really that simple. A simple budget is what is coming in, what is going out, where am I ultimately spending the money? And then when you know where you're spending the money, you can also make changes that will improve what's left. And whatever is left, you have to purposefully label it. You have to label it with an intention. You can't just say, well, it's just sitting around. I'll use it as I need it. So the five accounts I want to tell you that you should have, number one is the cash account. You should always keep some money on hand in cash. Number two is a savings account. You should always be saving until you can invest. You don't have to save up $100,000 before you buy a house. You can save up $10,000 and there's ways to still buy a house or make an investment. There's another an account called the give box, right? Give to help other people. No matter how much you're making, there's always something that you can do. Maybe it's not a lot at the beginning, but it's something and you'll feel great about it. And then debt. There's two types of debt. There's good debt and bad debt. And so I want you to pay off all your bad debt as quickly as you possibly can but I also want you to incur as much good debt as possible to build wealth. So how do I define the two of them? Well, bad debt is money that you put into something that is never going to make you money. Good debt is money that you've invested or you've borrowed that is going to make you money. As simple as that. So pay off all your bad debt and use your good debt to build more wealth. And the last is the buy box, which is buy stuff only when it makes sense. So I'm not going to go that into detail on those boxes, but right now I just want you to remember the five cash box, save box, give box, debt box, and the buy box. That's what's really important as for where your money should be going and you can make some better decisions. Now, before taking on risk, invest in yourself with specialized training. See, a lot of people take risk. Like I'm not against cryptocurrencies or blockchain or NFTs. In fact, at some point, I'm going to be teaching about cryptos and NFTs and blockchains because I actually like a lot that's going on in that marketplace. But there's a lot of hype. And is it a fad or is it a trend? And we just don't know. So when we look at these things, before we take on the risk, we have to be able to evaluate that. And unless we're trained how to do that, we're going to be listening to a whole bunch of people that maybe bought Bitcoin when it was 700 bucks and it hit $34,000. But what's interesting 
And it hit 19,000, but they didn't sell. They didn't even sell a portion of it. And there would have been a strategic methodology to put in place if that was the game that you were playing other than buy Bitcoin at $1,000 and hope it goes to 100,000 bucks. That's not the way to play the game. So before taking on risk, invest in yourself with specialized training, specialized education. Then make sure you have the right tools. So what do I mean by that? Well, I invest amongst other things besides real estate. I'm also investing in the stock market. Now I have tools. Some of them are very complex to look at and, and very confusing. And so not only did I get some specialized training in stock market investing, but also in the tools themselves. But as much training as I have and or have received and as many wonderful tools that I have, I still also lean on expert support. So that's the third component, which is number one, specialized training, number two, the right tools, and number three, get the expert support. Now people say, well, you know, I'm gonna have to pay for these things. I promise it will be a lot cheaper than getting that education and not having the right tool and not having the right support. I promise you, it will pay you the absolute highest returns. Even Warren Buffett talks a lot about investing in yourself before making any other kinds of investments. And that investment that you make in yourself can never be taken away from you. So again, come to the end of another quick session on money. I look forward to hearing your comments or reading your comments. Feel free to go to stephenlibman.com, sign up for our newsletter, which will be forthcoming in this little while. We have lots of exciting stuff. Go to my Instagram page at Stephen Libman. And uh, I look forward to sharing some more about money with you soon. All the best.